This is ATL Day Ones, part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. And it starts now. Welcome into ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and Tanitra. It is a thirsty Thursday and whoo, I don't know about y'all, but I'm so excited, so excited. But before we get into what we're going to talk about today, T, I got to say thank you to all our listeners. Thank you for making ATL Day Ones your first listen of the day. And remember, we are free and available wherever you download your podcast and wherever you download your podcast. Make sure you give us a five-star review. The Atlanta Hawks got it done. Travis Schlank is the man of the year. Woo, we're going to get into that. But before we do that, we got to talk about what the Braves got going on. They were setting records and breaking records last night. We'll get into that. And last but not least, our boy, Anthony Edwards is straight up Atlanta. Yes, I meant to not pronounce that second T. <laughs> but before we get into all that, uh, T, we got to talk about the Braves last night. They were able to get the win 4-1 to one against the Philadelphia Phillies. There are now three games back, and we're still in the month of June of the New York Mets because they got swept by the Astros. Go Houston. I'm a Houston Astros fan. I appreciate yeah, y'all for rocking with us. But, T, the Atlanta Braves look like they got this thing rolling. Yes, and I love that they're doing it in all sorts of ways with faces in spaces that we never thought would happen, right? So we're looking at Kyle Wright, and he just continues to evolve his game. He is now tied for second place for most wins in all of Major League Baseball with nine of those wins, gives up that one run, and then that is it. It is seven innings yes. of one-run ball, striking out four, only giving up a couple of walks, and right. just really looking so poised on the mound. So you get it from him, and then you get some good offense out there. You know, you got Matt Olson, Mr. Double-Double. Like, it's crazy. <laughs> 31 doubles. He's out there, like you said, setting records and leading the league in doubles. And then for Michael Harris – from him getting to the plate and giving that second insurance row, we'll call it last night, to him getting us that beautiful final defensive play to end that game and put the Braves in position to, like you said, start to really, really be on the heels of the Mets after what they've done, swan songing, songing a couple of nights in a row to the Astros. Now it's just three games back. Now we can talk a little bit about what this thing really is because I believe now that you have played – now three quality teams in a row, and you are guaranteed at least a win of this series, if not a sweep tonight. You've gotten the quality wins that you needed, and you've done it in all the ways possible. No doubt about it. And like you said, we've we've kind of seen this movie before when it comes to Kyle Wright, right? You know, we can start yeah. there. And just from uh, getting guys on bases, guy just kind of mm -hmm. lurking around on base, and then him <laughs> trying to figure it out. And I, yes. I, I would love for it not to the guys lurk around on base, but <laughs> – the fact that he's been able to figure it out and get out of those innings when he gets into trouble, that's, mm -hmm. that's, what, that's the growth that we've talked yeah. about, or the growth that we've seen from Kyle Wright throughout this entire season. And mm -hmm. it is just a beautiful thing to watch. And, and as far as Michael Harris goes, <sighs> man, this dude, the youngest player in – the youngest hitter in, the, in the Major League Baseball, by the way, let's not – Let's not forget that fact. The yes. Guys, in the last 10 games, is batting 351, yes. T. Yes. And just Great. absolutely – he's a difference maker in the outfield. Yes. Like, he, even if he wasn't hitting like he is right now, and I think that's just an add – that's just add on, right? That's mm -hmm. just a, the extra cheese on my Philly, right? My, yes. my Philly cheese steak, pun intended. <laughs> you know, so I, I just think it's just a matter of him – he just seems so comfortable in that space. And mm -hmm. I think this is – a lot of people try to make those comparisons to Christian Pache, and I'm just like, mm -hmm. who is that? Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know, yeah. like, uh, who is that? I don't forgot who that guy is. Like, that right. guy is somewhere on the West Coast chilling and, and hanging out. But yeah, um, I, I think it's just a matter of him really being settled in and, and, and really starting to find – he's fine-tuned his, his swing a little bit. Mm -hmm. You can see his hands a little different in a different position, yeah. a little bit lower than, than before, and so he's mm -hmm. already making adjustments. Right. The, the, the doggone amount the, – the, 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 I guess the, my, my optimism is just mm – -hmm. I can't even find the words. My optimism is so great oh, for this yeah. guy because he's just been absolutely just killing it. 
He has, and I would actually like to make what I find to be a better comparison, which is Austin Riley. So yes. it doesn't have to be about the positional comparison of Pache being in the outfield and Harris being in the outfield. To me, his trajectory is more along the lines of Austin Riley, but you just made a great point. It took Austin Riley a little bit longer to kind of adjust his swing. He came out guns blazing, the mm -hmm. league figured him out, and then he kind of trailed off. Then he got with Ron Washington and some others, adjusted the swing, and now we're seeing what we've, we're seeing so far this season and also what we saw at the end of last season. To me, what Michael Harris is doing is much closely, more closely aligned with that because you said it. He's already making the adjustments at the plate that we never quite saw Pache able to do. And that to me is what's most important. Be and the other thing is every now and again, we just like to throw out Brian Snicker on this show because he's able to now have these parts that he's able to comfortably move so he can go and put Travis Darno in a DH position in this series. And he can put William Contreras in as a catcher and still get good pay dividends of him calling a good game as well as giving you something at the plate. So I also like when we are looking at today being the first day that Ronald Acuna Jr. is traveling with the team, still not playing yet, but traveling mm -hmm. with the team so we know that he's steadily creeping back. How nice is it for Snit to still have pieces in place where he's confident that he's still going to get what he needs at the plate. He's still going to get what he needs in the outfield. And this team can just keep chugging along as they now get set to hopefully sweep the, the uh, Phillies and then be on their way to hopefully then get it done in Cincinnati. No doubt about it. At 6.05, first pitch, Ian yes. Anderson is on the mound. Yes. But coming up next, we will be talking about the Freddie Freeman saga. But before we get there, Whew, T, tell them about LinkedIn and what they got going on with the ATL Day Ones. Yeah, you know, a lot of people love what LinkedIn has done for them over the years. I know personally, I've used it for networking. That's helped me a lot, but also sneaky good at giving you opportunities to research companies, find out more about individuals that you may be interviewing with. So it really is a great resource for individuals, but also a great resource for employers as well. So you can create a free job post in a matter of minutes on LinkedIn to reach a network and just go beyond your wildest dreams because you're talking about 810 million people. This is the worldwide largest professional network that is out there online. So you can add the job and the purple hashtag hiring frame to your LinkedIn profile to spread the word that you are hiring. So your network can help you find the right people to hire. Simple tools like screening questions make it a little bit easier for you to drill down on your ideal candidates. And then it's why a lot of small businesses, especially with some really good rates that LinkedIn Jobs offers, it's why they're number one in delivering quality hires versus say some of their competitors out there. So LinkedIn Jobs can help you find the candidates you wanna to talk to faster. And did you know this? Every week, nearly 40 million job seekers visit LinkedIn like I have, like Jarvis has as well. So just post your job for free at linkedin.com slash locked on MLB. That's locked in, oh, excuse me, LinkedIn rather, dot com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. And since I fumbled there, I'm gonna give you guys that one more time. LinkedIn.com slash locked on MLB to post your job for free. And of course, terms and conditions apply, but check it out. Great resource for employers as well as potential employees. Speaking of employers, Freddie Freeman regretting may, uh, being with the Dodgers right now. First, we find out that he fired his agent, which yes. his name's now has come out, Casey Close. Yeah. Um, and, you know, every, we thinking everything's starting to settle down, but mm -hmm. then we have the poop starter himself, Doug Gottlieb, tweeted out a uh, holy. Um, Doug Gottlieb tweeted out that um casey close never told freddie freeman about the Braves' final offer that's why mm -hmm. freeman fired him he said he found out about in atlanta this weekend so that's why you may explain why all the emotions were coming out and he but um, golly went on to say it isn't that rare to have happened in mlb but mlb excuse me mm -hmm. but it happened close knew freddie would have taken the atl deal now mm -hmm. close so obviously that tweet blew up and then close has uh, released a statement he said mm -hmm. duck Gottlieb tweeted a wholly inaccurate characterization of my negotiations with the atlanta braves on behalf of freddie freeman we are immediately mm -hmm. evaluating all legal options to address the reckless publication of inaccurate information t i know that was a lot but who do you tend to believe because i don't know if i want to put all my stock in doug Gottlieb, but yeah. i would assume that 
I, he values his reputation, so he want to put something yeah. out there that he didn't at least have some close knowledge of. Yeah. To me, this seems like it could be a where there's smoke, there's fire situation. Right. And the truth lies somewhere between what the agent is saying, what Gottlieb is saying. The truth is somewhere in the middle. But mm -hmm. I do believe there there's something about this that still could lean a little bit in Doug Gottlieb's direction. And what I say is this. When you've been with an organization for years, like Freddie Freeman has been with XL Sports Management and maybe even that particular agent, Casey Close, for years, you tend to trust that person, right? And sometimes right. trust them too much. How many of us have had an accountant, an attorney, an agent, et cetera, who has done Tax good work for us? <clears throat> exactly. Who's done good work for us in the past. And so we say, okay, you got this. I'm sure you, you all is well, right? And right. we know that we should go back and double check something or triple check it that one final time and we just don't. And it's bitten us all in the butt. It's just for Freddie Freeman, maybe the bite of his butt is a little bit bigger than it has been in ours. Not just financially, because he still got the six years that he wanted and still got a good deal, but maybe in terms of where he really wanted to be. And I think about this as well. Like, there, I, I don't believe the story is finished because you got reports that Trey Turner is unhappy with the Dodgers. And so maybe this is not the place for Freddie Freeman. And maybe some things, some wheels will start to turn a little bit sooner to get him out of there. Not saying mid season or anything like that, but who knows next year, maybe the season after that, you just never know. I just think that this story is going to prove to have way more layers than maybe we first thought it had. And honestly, I thought it had legs and layers already, but now I really am convinced like, yeah, there might be a bit more to this story than we, we previously thought. You know what? And, and like, like you said, I'm with you because it, Basically, it's confirming all of the layers that we thought were that were tied to this story, you know, yeah. and they're just starting out now, starting to come out. And, mm -hmm. and you know, and I don't think Clayton Kershaw, his comments that he made over uh, over the weekend um, about Freddie Freeman. Hey, we're not top liver either. You know what I'm saying? So I think it's a lot going on out there in La La Land. I'm glad it's all going out on out there because the Braves, like we said, Keep they have the first pitch tonight, 605. They're three games behind the NL East. Y'all mm -hmm. handle that out there. And, 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 and the city of Atlanta is going to. Watch the Braves catch these New York Mets because we already know the Mets are going to Mets. And but coming up next, though, T, the Hawks got that dude. This is the guy that we said that I said that if the Hawks get him, they might be cooking with some grease. We're gonna talk about why next on ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and Tani Tanitra, <laughs> part of Locked On Sports Atlanta. That's it. Welcome back to ATL Day Ones. I am Tanitra Batiste, that is Jarvis Davis, and we appreciate you guys for rocking with us as always, because guess what? You know we always bring you the tea, right? And you're probably wondering why I am <laughs> sipping tea Ooh, from this particular cup. It's a Christmas cup, because it's, I know it's June, but it's Christmas in June and July for the yes. Hawks. <laughs> yes. Why? 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 Because they finally got what everybody was mm. wishing for for Christmas yes. this year. I'm feeling some Beyonce vibes, Jarvis. I'm feeling right now like, partner, let me upgrade you because that is exactly <laughs> what the Hawks did when it was announced that they indeed traded for DeJounte Murray. So the all-star Spurs guard is coming to the A. The Spurs get Danilo Gallinari, unprotected 2025 and 2027 first round picks. So 2026 swapping picks and the 2023 Charlotte protected first rounder as well. But Jarvis, I feel like this is one of those deals where it may look like, wow, that is a lot for the Hawks to give. But those are projected players who will make a splash in the NBA. The Hawks are at a point in place where they've got pieces, but they need more and they're in win now mode. So I'm comfortable with this particular deal because it really speaks to that. And we've been hearing so many rumors about Murray being traded. Now that it's happened, I feel like the Hawks did not give up too much. Although love what Gallo was able to bring the last couple of years, appreciate his service here. But I feel like they gave, they actually walked away in pretty good standing to be able to not only get DeJounte Murray, but possibly go back to the trade market and acquire another piece or two. You know what? And like, I just want to say this, like I've, you know, I've we've we've covered you know the Hawks and the Falcons and Braves and everybody in this city that that you know uh, that matters to to the the city of Atlanta, but I just can't remember a time when I felt this excited about yeah. in the off season about yeah. an Atlanta team. 
specifically mm-hmm. the Atlanta, especially the Atlanta Hawks because okay. we we've you know you talk about it, go back to the 60 win team and you know having mm-hmm. those guys you know they they were just a bunch of good they guys got- playing together yeah. yeah they were just guys right you not not to kind of knock what they who they were as players yeah, but they yeah. were good they were solid players but they weren't guys that moved the meter and for as we've been talking about this trade it, I start to not get myself too excited because yeah. you know it's city of Atlanta build you up to tear you down my dad always told me that right oh uh, yeah. <laughs> right okay. right yeah so yeah I got the little sports PTSD okay. you understand like you understand the diagnosis right so but when this thing got closer and closer and closer and y'all start seeing some of the reports you start reading some of the tea leaves mm-hmm. I'm just like man this it makes too much sense right yeah. because it's, right. A, lot, a lot of people can't see the side for San Antonio Spurs and why they this deal makes more sense for them and what they're mm-hmm. trying to do because they know exactly what they're trying to do they have a vision yeah. for what they want to do they want to get younger and mm-hmm. they want to get bad <laughs> you know they want to get bad and try to see if they can get that guy that kid out of australia next year who everybody's right. clamoring for so mm-hmm. I, I think that just being i just got so excited about where this team the, the possibilities that this team has right now because like you said you mentioned John Collins not being included in that trade and mm-hmm. them, the possibility of them bringing in another guy, yes. you know, that can help them out and be legit contenders. And I just, I'm just super, super duper excited yeah. for this city and mm-hmm. for the Hawks. And man, shout out to Travis Schlank, man. He's trying to move into yeah. the Alex Anthopoulos uh, realm. Yes, right yes. And you know, <laughs> we talk about a dog, right? We've always said that the Hawks are in need of a dog on the court. Well, I feel like Travis Schlank made some big dog moves right here in the front office, right? I think that was a huge move for him to just be patient and wait to see what kind of deal could be made to get their guy. And listen, it's a good deal for the Spurs as well because of where they are. They actually have a pretty decent history of tanking and getting their guy, Tim Duncan. And right. they also are in a point in place where they tried to do it in a different way, letting Kawhi Leonard walk and trying to you know build through free agency or through the draft and it just wasn't working for them because they, they were getting kind of Rosen, that failed yeah. exactly yep. it just wasn't working so they just decided you know what we're just going to scrap it we're going to start from scratch and we're going to see what we can build and therefore that opens up the opportunity for for a guy like murray to be available and i love it on so many levels because you talk about some Thing, you know, there are the obvious things on the court, right? He's a two-way player. He gives you that number two who's a strong compliment to Trey Young, mm-hmm. and they can both really uh, kind of help each other elevate their games, if you will. Trey Young, obviously, is going to have to do some more off-the-ball play, but I, I think he's up for it. I think he's up for yes. the challenge, and you've got the sneaky good. That wingspan is ridiculous, right? He's a, he's a massive guy. Right. At two. So you got to love that for him as well. Uh, in terms of that. But I just want to say there's something else off the court that I think they bring to the table as well. And that's a chemistry, right? So I had an opportunity to see them at All-Star, see them talking on the court, see them talking behind the scenes, developing a chemistry that who knew would, you know, come to fruition here. But that even there was a play that I uh, played earlier in my other job, uh, (laughs) but I played uh, on uh, our local radio station where uh, it's, it's Murray to Young, there's an assist, there's a lob, and I'm like, mm, interesting. So, yeah, you like what you're seeing in terms of that. And there's another piece that could be added that could bring even further instant chemistry. But before we talk about that, Jarvis, you got to let the people know about something that is also working and could work for them as well. You know what? I have super big news, T. Guess what? The yeah. one, the only NBA Jam is back and is brought Woo-hoo. to you by Arcade One Up. They are friends of the show. They're the leader in home retro arcade games. And, you know, everybody's dropping those arcade games in the man cave. I don't know. I might have the dog on try to get up in this <laughs> thing. But I'm going to tell you about a, a nice deal that Arcade One Up is doing for Locked On listeners. But before we get there, I got to tell you about what what the what's what's coming up, right? This they're bringing back the best game ever, NBA Jam. Yeah. But not only they're bringing back NBA Jam, they're bringing the Shaq Edition machine. And we all know for those that play NBA Jam, Shaq was a guy that you could not immediately get. And there were always little codes because I remember playing the game back in the day. He's like, oh, what's the code to get Shaq? Or what's the code to get Michael Jordan? Uh-huh. And a lot of times it seemed like all of it was a myth. <laughs> you know what I mean? But, but it was something that I truly, truly enjoyed. 
And what you can do is, there are a lot of new features there. You can compete with friends and family through all new Wi-Fi leaderboards, making your making you more connected than ever. And you can pre-order it now from RK1Up.com. And they even got even more classes like Golden Team, Mortal Kombat, and many others starting at just three ninety nine. All right, I said that they're gonna do something special for locked on locked on listeners and viewers. Here it is. They are giving away a NBA Jam Shack edition to a locked on listener. Enter for a chance to win a game console for your man cave at rk1up.com slash locked on. That's RK, the number one up dot com slash locked on you got to <laughs> july 8th so go ahead and do it we are almost in the month of july right now i know it's hard to believe july 8th to enter into this competition and don't miss out enter today who are you gonna play with goodness who else gonna play and, with the hawks though t <laughs> i know right that sounds like a pretty cool deal but even better is the fact that we're talking about not just the acquisition of Dejounte murray but also the fact that that deal put the hawks in place to be able to put some more pieces around trey young so that said what are your thoughts should they stop right here are they done should they be done and if they're not done where do they go from here you know what? I don't think they're done. Um, I tweeted out yesterday at GRSD90. Give me a follow. And Tanisha Batista, follow us. We're pretty interesting, if I can say so myself. Um, I tweeted out that this is a slow burn, you know, because yeah. this is a, a – I even used the analogy of a cooking a brisket, and people had issues with my temperatures that I was using, but that's a whole other conversation. Um, uh, and I said that, you know, Travis Lang isn't done because we all have heard the reports about John Collins, right? Like, yeah. I don't think that you can go into the season with him on this roster at right. this point because mm -hmm. I believe you're at a point of no return, not in a necessarily super negative right. part, but just from a professional part, right? You're not going – all of these rumors aren't just rumors. There is some, there is some, some realness to it. Like, even mm -hmm. Woj even said, hey, they're still engaged in conversations okay. about John Collins. So, mm -hmm. we know Woj is – pretty much 100% mm -hmm. when it comes to what's going on around the NBA. Yeah. So I think that there is, and if you trade John Collins, mm -hmm. I would say you ha it has to be a big. You have to get a solid big, if not even a, a superstar level type big right. in return right. if, if you're going to uh, trade him away because mm -hmm. his contract is manageable. He's a solid player. He's, he's improved each and every year that he's been here with the Atlanta Hawks. But I, I think we just found out that, he wasn't a, a number two level type guy. But now yeah, they have yeah. that guy. I think that, you know, just from a professional standpoint, go ahead and mm -hmm. make the trade, get mm -hmm. your back a solid big so you can be able to do what you need to do. Yeah. And that would also probably get you a true big three because right. you definitely now have the big two, but that would probably get you a true big three. And the other piece there is this, because we always talk about those camps. Now you've gotten the backcourt taken care of. So those people who were in that camp are happy. Now you're just down to maybe looking at a wing defender, uh, which you kind of got in DeJounte Murray. So I think you kind of shored that up as well, because you'll probably retain, the Hawks probably retain DeAndre Hunter and Anyaka Okongwu. And Clint Capella is probably not going anywhere either, unless there can be some massive negotiations right. and some you better get somebody yeah, good you, exactly. in return if you trade yeah you really do and, and <laughs> not to say that travis Schling can't pull it off but the bar would be set so very high just in terms of what those numbers would have to look like but there is one other place that the hawks can indeed shore things up and that is in getting a backup point guard and mm -hmm. i love the possibilities don't know where it's going but the fact that patty mills declined that 6.2 mil option with the nets tells me that there's a possibility that maybe he can come and join dejounte murray who has a ton of respect for him after playing with him for five seasons with the spurs he really was sort of a saving grace for the nets when they couldn't get kyrie on the court Patty Mill stepped up last season for them, and that could be a really nice addition or someone who could facilitate in opening things up for the bench mob should Lou Williams maybe retire, right? Or if DeLon Wright potentially moves on. So that's something that I'm watching to see as well if the Hawks might just be in the pursuit for Patty Mills. But when we come back, we now know that DeJounte Murray is going to be so Atlanta. But we're going to talk when we come back in For the Culture about somebody else who is. So join us on the other side. Final segment of ATL Day Ones with Jarvis and Tanitra. We want to thank you for rocking with us throughout the entire show. 
Ooh, this has been a, a, a good one. So, ex so excited about what's going on with DeJounte Murray and yeah, get the Atlanta Hawks getting their guy and what's next. And we're trying to see what's going on because Travis yeah. Slank is trying to work some magic. We want to thank you for the magic that you've been working with us because you guys have been liking and subscribing to our YouTube channel. And yeah. also, I've seen no reviews. I've seen no <laughs> reviews. They've been five stars as well. Continue to Nothing. do that if you haven't done so. Uh, we, we Thank you because Locked On Sports Atlanta has it, it's continued to grow. We're over mm -hmm. 2,100 subscribers on, on YouTube, and you guys have been con consistently supporting us, and we thank you so much for that. Never want to take that for granted. Now, Tanitra, this segment is called For the Culture. It is the intersection between sports entertainment and the culture and sometimes mm -hmm. whatever the heck we want to talk about <laughs> and when we think about somebody that embodies atlanta um anthony edwards comes to mind i came yeah. so i was strolling across this little video and uh, -huh. uh this dude was working out you know kind of kicking it with um a couple guys and mm -hmm. talking about you know um kind of fooling around a little bit yeah. and he had he got a football put in his hands and and he told somebody to run a route, and uh, T uh, knew pretty good. Like he, he he put that bad boy on a rope, probably about 30, 40 yards. And I was like, <laughs> man, what is going on? Like the fact that it, and, and then the the commentary is that what makes it so great because it's just Atlanta vernacular. Like just it's just a rhythm that goes with this thing, right? You know, like a lot of people looking at me crazy right now, you know, but. Oh! Tanisha yeah. knows it. No, Tanisha, you, I know you know exactly what I'm talking about. It's just a flow and a rhythm that goes with people who are actually from Atlanta. Sure. And when they speak, you just like, oh, yeah, that dude's from Atlanta. And just yeah. to see the athleticism he was able to put on display on that video, I was just like, oh, my God, we got to talk about this. Yeah, he's something special. He really, really is. And he's a character. So he, Super he's... Super character. We, we say all the time around here putting on for the city. But Anthony Edwards puts on for the city every day he wakes up. And gets right. out of bed <laughs> because that's mm -hmm. just who he is. He yeah, is it's, so, it's simple. It's easy. <laughs> exactly. It, it's really, really who he is. And every time I hear a fun story like this about him, it takes me back to All Star and being able to meet him and interview him. He's just a joy. And yeah, he is also just a gifted individual, like oh, athletic wow. prowess on ten. So yeah, we get to see it on a basketball court most of the time. But listen, just like, and my mind went quickly to Allen Iverson, just like somebody like him who could just do it all. And they always said he was a better football player than he was a basketball player. That's where this, wow. this particular, right. That's where this particular video took me. But yeah, I, I think to myself, this city and the rhythm and the flow and the way people rock and the way they talk, it's like, it's like New Orleans just in a different space because yeah, it's the same thing. When people back home talk, a lot of times people are like, okay, what did she just say? Okay, what did he just say? <laughs> <laughs> and the <a> translator. <laughs> right. It makes perfect sense to me. I'm like, oh, so what she said was you go straight at the light, make a right turn, and then you're going to drive 2.5 miles, and then you're going to make a left. And the person is listening to me going, oh, I didn't hear any of that. That's, that's not what I heard at all. So it's just really, it's like, listen, the same crazy, quirky Atlanta language that I've come to love and mm -hmm. laugh about, but love is the same way back home They, they that people do it, right? It's the same yeah. way. I love it. I love it. And you see, the funny thing is it shows up in different iterations like, okay, Jarvis, so this is a funny, but I get to... A point where I never get to, as you know, because we were doing it, we were doing pre-production and I was like, oh, dear God, I got to get gas. Like, I never let my car right. get that low. Mm -hmm. And as soon as I got to the gas station, of course, somebody was right there wanting to help me pump gas. And I was like, no, I'm good. No, nah, no, nah, sis. And, uh, you know, I don't want to pump gas. And I was just going to, I was going to help. I was like, okay, I think I heard one word he said. Or two, no, sis. After that, I, I, I didn't know. But I knew, like, mentally how to translate kind of sort of what he was right. saying. Yeah, yeah. Was like, well, I think in Atlanta terms, not Atlanta, in Atlanta terms, what he was trying to say is he would have really pumped the gas for some change. But once I said, no, thank you, he kind of felt some type of way. So then he had to kind of let me know I don't want your money anyway. And so he kind of so, did it in his own. Yeah, it's ended like exactly how he's supposed to end it. I'm going to bump you anyway. <laughs> yeah, right. right. And I was like, yeah, that's so here. Just like when I'm like at the red light. And I don't accept the water from the water boy. Like, yeah. 
Yeah, I'm like that. Oh, That's so like our squeegee guys in Louisiana that want to squeegee right. your windshield. So, I mean, hey, look, I'm not judging, mm-hmm. okay? We we got our own version in, in New Orleans as well, <laughs> right? But yeah, love me some Anthony Edwards. He's just a funny, just a funny guy. And, and you know how social media gets down, you know, start yeah. conversations start to happen in the reply. So, you know, right, I like to go down a rabbit hole. Yeah, go down a rabbit right. hole, like start scrolling, scrolling, scrolling. Then, you know, they were on Georgia Tech campus, like I mentioned. Yeah. And yeah. <laughs> somebody was like, uh, he will start for, for Georgia Tech right now. <laughs> I was like, imagine if Anthony Edwards said, you know what? Oh, I'm good on basketball for now. I'm gonna take a little break. I'm gonna go play college football and go do my thing. Like, like, and and we know that it's possible, right? Because you know, J.R. Smith, you know, yeah. he came straight out of high school and now he's yeah. um, competing professionally. I mean, not professionally. I'm sorry, collegiately uh, yeah. at North Carolina AT on on right. the golf team. And I was like, yeah. man, if this dude just got focused and said, I want to play football. Who wouldn't recruit this dude? Who would take a chance on this dude? And I'm, man, that dude would have been an absolute NIL gold mine. He might, he might, he, he might make more in this, uh, than he's made in his rookie contract yeah. playing collegiate football, you know, with all the NIL deals, they, all the, the $9 million been, numbers being thrown around in college football today. Yeah. I would not be surprised, man. Like, right. Anthony that was, you know, I can broke with that thing for you. I got you, bro. I know I know exactly how you feel. I know exactly where you come from, man. I can help can I you help out, you? my brother. I can help you out. I can do that for you. Just oh, for my you. goodness. <laughs> my goodness. My Lord. Speaking of help, 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 the Braves have spent the month of June helping themselves out. And if they can get this win tonight, Jarvis, they will actually break an Atlanta franchise record. So that record of 21 and 5 that you and I talked about earlier is what they've been able to do during their time in Atlanta. They can break a record that has actually stood for two two decades if they get this win in the sweep tonight and more importantly if they get this win and especially if the uh, Mets can lose again they're one step closer to taking their rightful place atop the NL East so we will be watching to see if Ian Anderson can give them what they need as he gets set to face off against Aaron Nola tonight like you said starting pitches at 605 so we'll be looking to see how that goes down we will keep our eyes on the pulse of what's going down with the Hawks because Jarvis and I agree. We have a sneaking suspicion that Travis Link, Landry He's Field, and company are not finished <laughs> at all. And we love to see it because we want the Hawks to be in that conversation of the top four or five teams in the East and get themselves back into contention as well. Just like you guys keep us in contention for being your number one stop each and every day here on the Locked On Sports Atlanta Network. We appreciate you guys for that. We'll also appreciate you for always checking out A to Z with Mark Zeno because he brings the goods as well. So appreciate you guys for always rocking with us. We are back to hell of heat mm-hmm. here in Atlanta. So please be safe in those streets and come back and join us tomorrow where we will actually have a special guest for you. You want to know who it is? You got to come back. Be safe. Y'all come back now, you hear? <laughs> <laughs>